you all right, Gail? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. It's just the air in here, I guess. Ain't no air in here. This blasted mine. Someday them rotten timbers are gonna give and dump this whole mountain on us. Yeah. Let's just finish loading up and get out of here. I'm not going to soften it for you by giving you any double talk or any medical mumbo jumbo. Mr. Clark, you're going to die. What do you mean? What's wrong with him? Well, surely you're familiar with miners' consumption. Yeah, I know. I know about it. Well, it's got a good hold on you. There's nothing I can do to stop it. I'll put it to you straight. I don't give you much longer to live. How long? A month. Isn't there anything you can do to cure him? Well, my recommendation is get up in the mountains and stay out of the mines. Otherwise, you'll be dead in a week. in bed. I'm going to die. It's not going to be in any bed. Well, where do you think you're going to go? Oh, I don't know. Up to the high country someplace? Any place away from this fly-infested dust hole. Hello, Mrs. Thorne. <laughs> <coughs> well, can't nobody say Galen Clark wasn't mule stubborn right up to the very end. Zack, would you do something for me? You just tell me. This is all the money I got in the world. I've been kind of saving it up to bring my daughter Katie and her children out here to California from the East. I'd be obliged if 
You'd see that she got this. Now, the last word I had, <laughs> she was in Providence, Rhode Island. I'll see to it. You got my word. Good. I'll uh, feel a lot better knowing somebody's kind of looking out for her. Don't push yourself too hard. Just take it easy, all right? I'll do that. You've been a good friend, Galen. The best. I wish... I wish I'd have done something important. An empty feeling. Don't let it happen to you. See you. Wake up in the morning. Bury me, will you? Well, give it your best try anyway. Way to treat a dying man.
another one anyway. Hey! Now, hold on! If the consumption don't get me, starvation will. I can just see my headstone now. <laughs> Here lies Galen Clark. Killed by some dumb raccoon with no sense of fairness. Well... Had a change of conscience, huh? Thank you. You're not a bad little booger after all. Here, want some of that? If you could just rustle me up some beefsteak and beans, I'd dedicate the rest of my life to you. Which, incidentally, isn't worth a half a hoot. Leastways, that's what the doctor says. That's yeah, dry enough. A little wet never hurt anybody. <laughs> you know, I just came up into these mountains to find a nice, quiet place to die. Some peaceful valley somewhere where people wouldn't be tromping all over my last earthly remains. Hey, I'll wear that if you don't mind. Wouldn't fit you anyway. Wait a minute there. Get, get out of, now look, get out of that. You can be a lot of trouble, you know that? I bet you that's what they call you. Trouble. That's what I'm gonna call you. Trouble. Because that's what you are. <laughs> Trouble? Trouble? Where'd you go? Well, he's probably off taking care of some raccoon business. Whatever that might be. Gotta be long gone. Oh, well, there you are. You changed your mind, huh? Well, might as well come along. You stick with me, and you'll be all right. You're about to inherit all my worldly possessions. Just think of it. After I'm gone, you'll be able to wear this shirt any time you're a mind. Would you look you over there? Looks like somebody's about to drop in for supper. Only I don't think he's invited. <laughs> Uh-oh. Now we've started something. Go on, trouble. I don't think he's too happy about that.
think I've about had a trouble, old buddy. <coughs> I don't think this is quite what the doctor had in mind. Gotta dig myself a decent grave or the scavengers will get me. Excuse me, don't most people wait until after they're dead and before they get buried? I'm nearly gone. Oh, oh, I see. Um, are you gone yet? I guess not. I know how you must feel. Some days a person just can't die no matter how hard he tries. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you climb out of that hole and have some of these nice, nice dewberries that I just gathered over in the meadow? They're very good. I might fail. Is it all right if I put my feet in your grave? Here. So is, is, is he dying too? No. That's a raccoon. Yes, I know. Procyon Lotor. A what? That's Latin for raccoon. Where'd you pick that up? College, in Wisconsin. What are you, uh, some kind of a mountain man? No, I am a naturalist. What are you doing out here? Well, I'm moving up north to the mountains where the big pine timber is. I want to have one last look at it. Are you dying too? Oh, no. The lumber companies will be moving through there soon, stripping those mountains bare, taking every last tree standing. What's your name? John Muir. What might yours be, sir? Galen Clark. Right now, I'm a dead man. Just walking around, waiting for it to happen. Well, I wouldn't want to stand in your way if you made up your mind to die. Oh, no. It, uh, he's exactly my idea. You see, I got consumption. I had a setback yesterday, and I thought I was a goner for sure. But you're not. You're sitting right there, talking to me. You seem rather spry, too. Well, I feel like the bottom of a hog trough. Well, I must admit you look about the way you feel, but there's no reason why you shouldn't clean yourself up. What for? What for? Because you're a person, you're not a rock. What you should do is get your rear end out of that hole and do something. You said yourself you had a few days left. Well, don't waste them stuck in the ground like a carrot. Wouldn't you rather have somebody say to you, oh, yes, I remember. What's your name again? Galen Clark. I remember Galen Clark. 
He didn't sit around on his tail all day long. He moved about and he did something. He made himself useful. What could I possibly do out here that's of any value to anyone? I'd better be going. But... Oh. One thing you do not eat. It's a little red berry, yellow spots. Now that's poison. And another thing, you keep your eyes open for the Yosemite. That's the Indian word for bear, and they grow very big up here in these mountains. Huge. Red berries, Yosemites. That's right. But, uh, uh, have a good day. Wait a minute. You forgot your... Get yourself cleaned up, sis. Last time was he in there. Hey, now don't you go chewing the buttons off of that shirt. That's the only shirt we got between us. You hear me? What was that trouble? Probably a squirrel or something, huh? <laughs> you won't find him over there. You want your squirrel? Here he is. Come on, trouble. enough. What's that you're mixing up there? You, 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 my tungi. Woolity, woolity. You uh, didn't put any little red berries with yellow spots in this, did you? Class enough. Well, Make your eyes water. What's all fired and important down here that I've got to see? Oh. Yeah, that's good. I've seen those before. That's an Indian sweat lodge. They use them to cure. Oh, no, you don't. Now. <laughs> you try to cure me or kill me. You know, this is a real nice campsite. 
I can prefer to like it here. Might be nice to build a cabin. Oh, here. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. There's no need to do that. Look at all these dead logs here. Now, when a tree falls over by itself in the forest, that's one life. When we take it and make it into a cabin, that's another life. Let's make our cabin out of these dead falls here. Hmm? My chest didn't hurt. No pain. No pain? No pain. Tanea. Tanea. Trouble. Trouble. Yosemite. Yosemite. Yosemite? Uh, uh. Just move easy into the house, and maybe you'll forget we're here. Yosemite. Hua. Hua. Manique, Yosemite. Monto. Hey. Is he always this friendly? Chum Hall. having a roof over his head at all. He seems to be downright civilized. you have obligations to your people. It's time I struck out on my own anyway. I want to thank you for all the help you've been to me. You've been a friend. You saved my life. 
Klaus and up. Klaus and up. Go well. What to you, come on, not that. Yosemite, what to you, come on, not that. Uh, what about Yosemite? Don't you, don't you want to take this bear with you? But you don't understand. Take him with you. Now, I don't mind you eating in my bed, just as long as you don't go sleeping in it, too. attention to him, he'll just go away. On the other hand, if he stays, maybe he'll guard the cabin. Huh? <laughs> guard it? He'll probably eat it. <laughs> It's an 
not lying. Now you stay here. Get back, you arrogant, smelly devil. You come any closer, I'll bounce this stick off your nose. Get back, I tell you. Well, Mr. Muir. Looks like you got yourself into a predicament. Well, you can always come down and join me, Mr. Clark. What are you doing up in these woods? I decided to take your advice. Do something useful. I couldn't persuade you to start right now, could I? Well, have to start sometime. Back. Give me your hand. I was afraid you were going to say that. Have you uh, ever been hit by a mountain lion? Uh, I tried not to make a habit of it. Why? I was just wondering what we're in for. Back. So this is what it's like to be a naturalist. I think we're in trouble now. Here comes his friend. That'll just even things out. One for each of us. turn ornery. Become a naturalist. Is that right? Well, well, well. How are you making out? Oh, fine. Just fine. I'm discovering all sorts of natural wonders. Outstanding. I suppose bumblebees, butterflies. And trees. Hmm, trees. Magnificent trees with, with dark red bark and standing 300 feet tall and 100 feet around. Very good, Mr. Clark. Very good. You see, what you are describing are Sequoia dendron gigantium. Now, they're extremely rare. You'll never find any giant sequoias in this region. Never? Never. I wouldn't put my money on it, Mr. Muir. I can't believe it. But these are definitely giant sequoias. But they're larger than any I've ever heard of. Do you realize what you have here? These are the largest and oldest things on Earth. Thousands of years old. They started growing before Christ was born. That's amazing. What about the lumber companies? Now, you said they were going to get timber rights in these mountains. They, they wouldn't cut these giants down, would they? From what I've heard, they plan to cut every tree they can. And when they find this grove of big sequoias, they'll be the first to go. Can't something be done to stop them? Not really. 
This is open territory. There's no law saying they can't cut the trees if they want to. Well, let's get a law passed. Well, if legislation were voted on by the state to protect this land, maybe. Well, let's get them to do it. It's not as easy as it sounds. But it could be done. Don't expect much cooperation. The state would never create a land grant like that just because it seemed to be a good idea. No, they would need facts, figures, and detailed information to prove this area to be unique. And somebody would have to document the whole thing. Me? Well, what's so funny about that? But each tree must be accurately measured. Its height, its circumference. I could do that. And the age of the trees must be estimated through sample ring counts. Yeah. You'd have to map the entire region, the rock formations, the waterfalls, the sequoia groves. Oh, do it. My God, man. Don't you realize what a staggering task that is? But this will give me a chance to do something, something meaningful, maybe something important with the time I have left. You are a stubborn man, Galen Clark. <sighs> oh, uh, he always rests up after he chases mountain lions. But don't you sleep there? Only when he lets me. <laughs> well, now. These books will tell you what you need to know. First one, cartography. Now, this one is plants and trees, how to identify them. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I, I can't take your books. No, no, no. You'll need them to do the job right. Besides, I have no use for them anymore. It's all right up here. I've read them a hundred times. Now it's your turn. Give these books a new life. I appreciate this. Good. Then I'll head up for Sacramento, and while I'm there, I'll try to get some sort of bill introduced before the state legislature. But the burden is going to fall on you and what you do here. But uh, what if the loggers show up before you get your work done? What will I do? Then you just try to get a message to me somehow. I have a friend in the state government there, a man named Harold Lawson. Now, he just might be able to, uh, to stall the lumber companies for a while, hold up their permits. Give me time to get all the information that we need here. <laughs> if I know those lumber companies, they have half of the politicians in their hip pockets. It's not going to be that simple. If it was simple, it wouldn't be worth doing, would it? We'll try. We'll do it.
there's a tree. Not bad for an amateur. What do you mean, put some more grass around? Well, yeah, I'll maybe. Am I glad to see you? Come over here. Now, how would you like to move some of these logs off me? Come on, Yosemite. There you go. Now you're getting it. That's the way. knows a territory like the back of his hand. He probably could show us around a bit, don't you think? Well, sir, Mr. McCauley, whoever it is is living here, he's not here now. He'll be back. We'll just wait. Tree like that. 
You know, this would save us a lot of survey time. Why, we probably could start cutting timber soon as the road was through. Maybe even before. Keelan, come on. What are you men doing in here? You make it a habit of just walking into a man's place without asking? You uh, do this Galen clock? That's right. Mr. Clark, we're from the Sierra Lumber Company, Sacramento. What are you doing up here? Oh, looking for someone to guide us through the territory. I thought maybe you could help us out. I don't think so. Oh, we noticed those maps of yours. Uh, I don't know what they're for, you know, why you made them, but they should be helpful to us. Pay you handsomely for the use of them. I don't want your money. <laughs> Mr. Clark, I don't think you understand. Sarah Lumber Company is willing to pay for what it wants. But if you can't buy it, then it just takes you. Why don't you just take this? I'll take those maps. I don't think you understand, Mr. Uh, McCulloch. McCulloch, you can't have my maps. I don't want your money. Now, I think it's time the three of you got out of here. Don't touch it. I don't think I'm making myself clear. Well, Zachary. Uh, gentlemen, I'm a miner by trade. I have a very limited knowledge of firearms. Now, this, this here rifle went off by accident, and I'm afraid I can't guarantee it won't happen again. So it might be a good idea if you were all to get out of here just as fast as you can. I have been known to accidentally shoot the nose off a man from up to 300 yards away. Oh, Galen, you old Oh, you grew three inches shorter when you fired that shot. How do you know where to find me? I heard stories from a couple of mountain men about a fellow named Clark living up in these parts. From the way they described him, real ornery and all, I figured it had to be you. <laughs> I got a surprise for you. What? All right, it's safe to come out now. Papa. Kathleen. I thought I'd never see you again. Let me look at you. You're still my pretty one. Oh, Papa. <laughs> Would you look at here? Yeah. Heather and Joey. Ah, oh, look at you. Last time I saw you, you were knee high to a mushroom. Hey, who's this? Who's our dog? His name's Hartag. Hartag, huh? Come here. Hey, he's a good old dog. Katie. Over here, I've planted myself a garden. I've got just about everything growing in it. I don't know what half of it is, but I eat it anyway. <laughs> now, I named him Trouble, but he's been about the best friend I've had since I left the mines. Yes, sir. All right, 
Uh, Galen? Uh, there's something else we'd like to tell you. Uh, Katie and I got married last month. I've known that ever since you got here. What? Oh, Paul, you didn't. Why, sure. You two have been grinning like a couple of kids with a sack full of candy. <laughs> Congratulations. And you, young lady, I hope you know what a no-good, low-down scoundrel you married. <laughs> we plan on heading up to Sacramento. I'm going to stake me a claim. I hear they're finding veins of gold up there as big around as a tree. <laughs> Not as big as my trees. It sure is beautiful here. Wouldn't it be nice if we could just stay forever? Honey, if the veins of gold are as big around as this tree, we're going to be the richest family in Sacramento. Oh. Zachary, <laughs> you're impossible. He's the one that gave me the idea. Oh, yeah. No. John Muir is a good man, and he feels the same way I do about this valley, and we're going to do everything we can to keep it from being ruined. You mean they want to chop down those big trees, Grandpa? That's right, Joey, but don't you worry about that. We're not going to let them. Well, how do you and Muir plan to stop them? They already got roads built halfway up here from Sacramento. I know. That's why I've got to prove to them that this area is one of a kind. i got to show them on paper with facts and figures and drawings that uh, those trees out there are maybe the oldest living things on the face of this earth. And that... Galen, you're wasting your time. You can't do that all alone. We'll help you, Grandpa. Sure, we can help you. Yes, Papa, tell us, what can we do? Well, I appreciate the offer, but now Zach here is anxious to get up to them gold fields before they're picked clean, right? Right. Zachary. The children never really have had a chance to know their grandfather. It would surely be nice if they could spend a little time with him now. Yes, please. Just for a while. Oh, I, look, I... I... All right, all right. But just for a little while. I gotta get to those gold fields sometime. <laughs> I think it'll work out better this way. Keep me from getting itchy to leave. I'll uh, file a claim and find us a place to live. And by the time I get back, your dad ought to be almost through with his work in the grove. Zachary. What? For what? For dragging you all over creation? No, for being understanding. I'm going to stay a while longer with Pa. Oh, you're so pretty in the morning. Now, you be careful. Oh, no, I will. I will. Zachary? Yeah? I want you to deliver a message for me when you uh, get into Sacramento. Sure, I'd be glad to, Galen. John Muir? That's right. And tell him what's happening with these loggers up here. I will. Luck. might be after. Papa. You wait here. Be careful. I'm just going to talk to him. Don't worry.
Are those loggers, Ma? Yes, Joey. Well, hello again. You fellas lost? We're surveying for a road, and we're doing just fine without you or your maps. You don't expect me to just sit back and watch it, do you? If you get in the way, I can guarantee it won't be very pleasant for you. If you know what I mean. Oh, I know what you mean. But I'm not so sure my friend there does. Search preserves. It's a bear! Hold it. Are you that bad? Have you lost your senses? Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Shoot him, Clark. You've got the gun. <laughs> Please. Well, I uh, could ask him to leave, I suppose. I'm not sure he'd do it. Please ask him to go. Oh, please. Yosemite. Chuma. Chuma. That was it. Oh. Don't forget your hat. <laughs> well, Yosemite, say goodbye to your buddies. I think they've had enough fun for one. <laughs> Likes you a lot. Wonderful. Papa, what does he want? Well, he wants to arm wrestle. Arm wrestle? Me? Why? He figures he can probably beat you. Oh, yeah? Well, we'll just see about that. Ha-ha! <laughs> Did you? <laughs> You 
You know, Katie, I've been thinking. I'd better put off that trip up to the North Grove for a while. No, Paul, you can't. I... I just don't like leaving you and the children here alone. We're gonna be just fine. All right. Good. And you'll be the first thing in the morning, and I'll get up bright and early and make you some nice hot biscuits for the trip. Be careful, Papa. I will. before the deer eat them? Go on, come on, quickly. All right. Shoo, shoo, go away. Put the ball. Oh, why don't you put it outside for now? All right.
little trouble, we're almost home. You, uh, you going back to the cabin. I got something to look into. Go on now, I'll be along. Start cutting that tree. Once he gets in, you two cut it down. Pull the stump out, get a couple of horses, pull it out into the trees over there. Now, you see those two trees up there? Yeah. All right, take them down. That's going to be our sight line. We're going to put our road right up through there. Not today, you won't. Mr. Clark, hope you didn't come up here to make trouble for us. If I have to. I don't know what your beef is, but we're going to put a road through here and we're going to haul timber out. Well, you're not going to haul any timber out without a permit. I'm cutting down this tree because it's in my way. I'd sure hate to see you make the same mistake. So why don't you go home and play with your maps and your pictures and let me get back to work. Give me you that. haven't caught on yet, have you? It's those maps and pictures that are going to stop you. I'm going to take them to Sacramento. And when the government sees what I have, they won't let you or any other lumber company come back into this territory. You're a friend of that troublemaker, John Muir's, aren't you? I'm his friend. I guess you might say we're both troublemakers. Hold on, Clark. We got a little more talking to do. <laughs> Why don't you and your men move out of here? Move out by about a hundred miles or so, or you'll be safe. What are you trying to do, Clark? Kill us all! This is getting to be about used up. I guess that means it's no good anymore. Hey, Ooh, would you look at that? Now, if you and your men want to be real safe, why don't you just stay away? Now you got a legal right to be up here. You're never going to keep us out, Clark. We'll be back the next time with the state government behind us. I doubt that. What you up to now, Galen? Oh, showing these men how to blow stumps. Here, why don't you join us? Uh, no thanks. Can't stick around too long. Just passing through. <laughs> you missed all the fun. Whatever happened to that uh, habit you had of always showing up in the nick of time? Never claimed to be perfect. Uh, Galen? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> they wanted to this territory bad. Muir says you got to get up there right away. Bring your maps and everything. 
the legislature is going to vote on a bill that could change this whole region into a public land grant. Public land grant? It could never be commercially developed. The lumber companies would have to stay out. And they're going to vote on it soon. Yeah, a couple of days. Help me hitch up the wagon. I got a great idea. That is, if you'll help me. Sure, I'll help. Those gold fields aren't going to run away, I guess. <laughs> nah, they'll be there for a long time. <laughs> Excuse me, could you tell me where the legislature is meeting? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Well, Zachary, we'll be ready. I don't think we can continue these sort of tactics any longer. If this bill is to be considered any way proper. It's all right. I know what I'm I want to say. Ready to... It's all right. Uh, pardon the intrusion, sir. My name is Galen Clark. Excuse me, Mr. Clark, but you're interrupting a very important session. But I have traveled a long ways to ask for the privilege of addressing this assembly. Well, I'm sorry, but you don't seem to realize that... Thank you, sir. Gentlemen, south of here is a valley, bordered on three sides by enormous granite mountains with waterfalls that are hundreds of feet <laughs> high. Mr. Clark. <laughs> The geographical nature of the area you refer to has been described for us in detail by your honorable compatriot, John Muir. You, you can spare us any further extolling of its wonders. Perhaps these gentlemen here do not realize the uniqueness of the area. Imagine, if you can, giant sequoia trees hundreds of feet high, thousands of years old, possibly the oldest living thing face of this earth. <clears throat> now, if this area is destroyed, we'll be losing one of our history's greatest legacies. Now, I have maps. Please, Mr. Clark. Gentlemen, it's, it's not just Mr. Muir and myself that are trying to save this valley from ruination. I have friends who have much more at stake. And I'd, I'd like for you to meet some of them. Zach? Gentlemen, if you allow the lumber companies to destroy the forest, the Indians, and the wildlife, we'll be left homeless. Mr. Clark, you presented a most amusing, and I must say, convincing argument. However, it has unfortunately come too late. The bill in question was voted on this morning and uh, defeated. Galen, wait. 
Galen, this is Harold Lawson, my friend I told you about. He's been pulling a lot of strings to keep the lumber companies out of the valley. Well, I've been trying to get this legislation pushed through. Nice to meet you, Mr. Lawson. And I appreciate all your help. I'm sorry that we weren't successful. No, that's just it, Galen. We still have a chance. Senator Connors has introduced a bill in the United States Congress calling for the protection of the entire valley region. Well, then we can still do it. I don't think the bill would go over very well in Washington right now with the Civil War going on. Hmm. Well, yes, I suppose Congress doesn't have much time to think about the wilderness, especially out here in California. Galen, I told you, this is not going to be a simple task. But, John, if there's any chance, any chance at all of saving that valley, I want to fight for it, even if it means going to Washington myself. Galen, there's no time. You know those loggers aren't just going to lay back and wait. Mr. Lawson, is there any way that you could maybe stall them for a while? Well, all right. I'll arrange for a temporary restraining order, and that'll keep the lumber companies out for another 30 days, and that's it. That's all I need. That's all I need. You know, I was just thinking, when your father gets back, why don't we just stay off? Help him out. Maybe build our own home. Start a farm. But what about Sacramento? What about the gold field? Oh, oh. what are we going to do with gold? We got everything we need, huh? Oh, Interesting and convincing material, Mr. Clark. But unfortunately, the Senate has tabled the Wilderness Protection Bill until the next session. But by the next session, the, the trees will have been destroyed. The whole forest will be gone. Now, we have to think of something that we can do right now. Nothing short of an executive order. And that's not likely to happen. An executive order? What's that? Uh, yes, an order from the President. But as I said, that's not very likely to happen. He's deeply involved with problems concerning the war. Well, I'll just have to talk to him. Thank you, sir. They won't let you see him. Get these messages over to Telegraph. I'd like to see the president on a matter of urgent business. Urgent, huh? Well, the executive bureau chief, pick up clearance papers and have those signed by Mr. Porter at the War Department. And you'll be interviewed by Corporal Sanders in the review office downstairs. Get a signature from the divisional officer in charge, bring that back here. Down the hall, third office on the left. And have it approved by Mr. Quinn. <laughs> Every signature, every approval that was requested. The president just doesn't have the time for this right now. trees in the world. 
sir, the military briefing? I've heard of their existence, but uh, of course, I've never actually seen one. Well, uh, if you haven't seen one, Mr. President, then it's likely you never will because they're going to be destroyed. Destroyed? I don't understand. That's why I'm in Washington. There's been a bill introduced to save a whole forest of these sequoias that's been discovered in California. But the bill has been tabled till next session, and by then they'll be gone. You're saying that these trees are to be cut down? Yes, sir. Excuse me, Mr. President, but we do have important military matters. I'm fully aware of the war, General Carson. But we must remember, one day soon, the war will end. The thundering of cannons will cease. The guns will be laid down. Then, then the peace of our wilderness will be very precious to us again. Delay the military briefing for 20 minutes. Yes, sir. Your name? Uh, Clark, sir. Galen Clark? Well, Galen, why don't you step into my office and see what can be done? Sacramento Garrison, California. Sir, because the natural resources of America belong to all the people, I believe that we must strive to see that these precious resources are not destroyed. Therefore, I'm ordering you as your Commander-in-Chief to designate all land longitude 119 degrees east and latitude 38 degrees north as public land. You are to preserve and protect this valley under the guidance of Mr. Galen Clark, who has been appointed by me as guardian of this grant. Sincerely, Abraham Lincoln. On June 30th, 1864, President Lincoln signed the historic bill providing for protection of 20,000 acres in the California mountains. It was the first step ever taken toward preserving our country's great wilderness, and it brought about the formation of America's national park system. The doctor had told Galen he would die at the age of 42, but he lived on to be 96 years old. He always wanted to do something special, and I knew he wouldn't give up until he did. To me, he became an example of what a man can really accomplish if he believes in himself. It was through Galen's hard work and far-sighted efforts that the land he loved and fought for would remain forever, exactly as it was when he first saw it, for all future generations to enjoy. Oh, he named this magnificent valley for the bear that was his lifelong friend and protector. Yosemite. And I'm proud. 